In this brief video, we'll examine how the GMAT scoring algorithm determines your scores. To do this, we'll examine the following graph, where we chart the question number and the level of difficulty of each question. Now, as an aside, please note that this is a very approximate overview, but it will give you a good idea of how computer adaptive testing works. Okay, so at the beginning of the math and verbal sections, you'll be presented with a question of average difficulty. If you answer the first question correctly, your next question will be more difficult. And if you answer the first question incorrectly, your next question will be easier. So let's say that you answer the first question correctly so that the next question is more difficult. If you answer that question correctly, the next question will be even more difficult. If you answer that question incorrectly, then the next question will be easier. This process continues until you eventually complete the entire section. At this point, the scoring algorithm determines your score by examining the difficulty level of the questions you answered correctly. So if the average difficulty level of the questions you answered correctly fell in the 630 range, then your final score would be 630. Now this is a very important point, so I'll say it again. Your score depends on the difficulty level of the questions you answered correctly. The algorithm does not care about the number of questions you answered correctly. In fact, most people will correctly answer approximately the same number of questions regardless of their score. For example, it's quite possible that a person who scores 410 and a person who scores 630 will correctly answer the same number of questions. The only difference between these two test takers is that the person who scored 630 correctly answered questions with a higher level of difficulty than the person who scored 410. Okay, so now that you know how the scoring algorithm works, you might be wondering what difference any of this makes when it comes to preparing for the GMAT. Well, the truth of the matter is that it shouldn't make any difference whatsoever. Yes, some students will spend a lot of time trying to find ways to exploit the scoring algorithm to their advantage, but doing so can often have the opposite effect and actually hurt their scores. For example, some students believe that spending extra time on the first 10 questions of each section will dramatically improve their scores. These students run the risk of wasting a lot of time at the beginning of the test, only to find their scores drastically reduced when they run out of time at the end. So my advice to all students is to forget about how the scoring algorithm works. Study hard and try your best to answer every question within the recommended times. 